Larry King now, it's Norm McDonald. It's very hard to find uh, a, a great comic, but uh, there's a craft to comedy that's not an art, you know? Because the craft is this. You have to make the audience make a specific noise at a specific time all together. Correct. Art is open to interpretation. Stand-up comedy is not. On Letterman's Farewell. I wanted to do stand-up uh, because I did stand-up on his show uh, 25 years ago. And so um, I did stand-up. And uh, I did the best stand-up I could possibly do. And then I got a little te teary. I choked up. With, I didn't realize I was going to choke up. And then I certainly didn't realize I was going to tell him I love him. I said, I love you. <laughs> on SNL's 40th anniversary. Eddie Murphy was going to do a skit on Bill Cosby on the 40th, and they didn't do it, right? That's right. That's correct, yeah. Was that a good decision? By Eddie? Yeah. Plus, you used to get stage fright, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, 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 bad stage. But I How'd you get over attacks. it? Xanax. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest, Norm MacDonald, one of the most respected comedians working today, though show business has never really found a place to put him. <laughs> He's been named by Comedy Central as one of the 100 greatest stand-ups of all time. He is known for his five seasons on Saturday Night Live, three of them as anchor of Weekend Update. He will serve as a judge this summer on Last Comic Standing, and he lends his distinct voice to Burner, the dragon in the new animated film, The Seventh Dwarf. Norm, it's so great to see you again. Good to see you, Larry. <laughs> you know I love you. you I we were just talking before, and I was saying that I think it's great that you can continue broadcasting now with this new media. You never have to retire, and I thought just the analogy came to me, the, the senior PGA. You know, these guys. The senior tour. Yeah, the Champions Tour, they call it. And uh, the guys can play uh, till they're 75, you know? I'm past that. The funny thing is, uh, you know, guys really suck. Then they go to the Champions Tour, they're the, the rookie, <laughs> and they win everything. <laughs> You've had jobs on sports shows, poker shows, online talk shows. The last comic standing, is this just another gig? Why did no, you... this is different because it's stand-up, you know? But you're like, not standing up. They're standing up. They're standing up. But when you said show business has never had a... Uh, a a beat on you. It's true, because all I, I want, ever want to do is stand-up, you know? And not only did I only want to do stand-up, but I only want to do stand-up in clubs. I do not like theaters. So this stopped my growth a little, you know, because... Why don't you like theaters? To me, it's a small man on a big stage, and I can't fill that space. I'm not Robin Williams, I'm not Gallagher, you know? So I like the intimacy. Personally, if I watch a show, if I watch a singer, I'm not much into music, but if I, watch, if I was to watch Bob Dylan, I would love to watch him in a club. I got it. So it's the same with comedy. And, and, and with stand-up comedy, the most important thing in live performance is, is interacting with the audience. How do you like being a judge? Uh, well, I'm a very judgmental person. So are you rough on the talent that appears? I judge not lest ye be judged. I threw that in the, I'm going to hell now. Do you, are you tough? I, I, well, I, this is the thing. Um, I'm, I, I'm pretty serious about stand-up comedy. So when I, it, it's naturally diluted now because, uh, um, you know, uh, there's always like 10 funny people. So uh, there's no supply and demand. Maybe 20 years ago there was 500 comics working, 10 funny people. Now maybe 5,000 comics working, 10 funny. It, it doesn't follow supply and demand, you know? Correct. Just because you need a funny guy, he's not going to appear. So what are you judging them on? Uh, is well, I judge them on the craft. Uh, you know, it's very hard to find uh, a, a great comic. But uh, there's a craft to comedy that's not an art. You know, because the craft is this. You have to make the audience make a specific noise at a specific time all together. Correct. Art is open to interpretation. Stand-up comedy is not. You must 
uh, get the exact same, it could be silence, it could be anger, it could be uh, anything, but you have to have that same noise from every single person in the audience. If it's mixed, you're dead. I love doing it. I know. And I, I love doing it. You know, I think that you would be a great comic. I watch you. I, 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 I put broadcasters and comedians together, you know? Like, Itching I think timing. you and Regis always seemed very, very funny to me when yeah. I watched, you know? <laughs> and I think broadcasting, because you're talking to one person. And I love it. I love I always wanted to be a broadcaster. I listen to you in Mutual of, hey, you want to hear a story about you that you don't know about me? Yeah. I, uh, when I went to uh, L.A., Johnny Carson was, uh, he had six months to go, you know. So my idea was I was going to be the last comic to break on Carson, you know, getting invited over the couch, anointed, all that, you know. And uh, the guy that was the booking uh, guy, he saw me and he said, at the time Jay Leno was doing Monday Night guest hosting, and he said, you're more of a Jay comic. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm not a Johnny comic. He's like, nah, you're more of a Jake. I don't even know what that meant, but it didn't sound good. And uh, so I, I did, never did Johnny. Years later, I did an impression of you on Saturday Night Live, you know, uh, your uh, uh, King's Things, uh, bulletin points. And uh, so I did a parody of that on, on SNL. And I only had to slightly magnify it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I get a call from Johnny Carson. And he wants to meet with me at his, his uh, office. So I go to his office, it's just me and him. And he pulls out a whole bunch of USA Today's clips you know, of your column. And he starts reading them. He goes, here, you take some, I'll take some, we'll read them. <laughs> and we read them. And he did a Larry King voice. And if I could have taped that, it was the most surreal. And he didn't do it on the show? No, no, this was after he was retired. Just in the office. Yeah, just me and him in the office, both, <laughs> both of us doing Larry King impressions. <laughs> what do you make of Roseanne Barr? You've judged alongside her, you... She, well, she gave me my first job in Hollywood. Did she? Yeah, she, I worked on her show, and, uh, you know, talk, I mean, um, uh, sitcoms are written by Harvard guys, mostly. <laughs> she didn't like that. She didn't like the Harvard guys, you know, because she came from... Is she going to run for president? I think she is, yeah. I don't know how much of it's a joke. Were you always funny, Norm? Were you a funny kid? Uh, I thought I was pretty funny, but everybody else thought I was weird. You know, like, in the class, there one guy would get all the laughs, and I'd go, no, that guy's hack. Like, I could see that guy was sucked, but he got all the laughs. And I, me and my friends, I'd go, no, he's not funny. We'll be right back with Norm MacDonald. Stay with us. Back with Norm MacDonald. He's one of the judges on Last Comic Standing, and they're going to have a whole new series starts in a two-hour special opening. Uh, what did you make of the Donald Trump and all this Mexican thing? Um, well, I was... Uh, I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> but this is what I like. Celebrity Apprentice. So I was sad. I thought Donald Trump was an exceptional uh, broadcaster and host on that show. I was shocked at how good he was. Because the two-hour finale he does live, he's walking down uh, 8th Avenue, you know, into, yeah. uh, into Radio City, and it's incredible how he just keeps talking, and he's just a natural uh, um, He's a natural. He's a natural. So I'm going to miss that, you know, because I really thought that show was fun. But you have no opinion on what he said? Oh, well, it was ridiculous. You mean with the, about the Mexicans? Um, well, I get, you know, sometimes people can say things that I guess they think are factually true, but the perception of it is bad. I don't know. You know well, what I mean? You said I, Mexico is sending its rapists. Now, as far as I know, this is what... They gather attention rapists. Yeah, this is what I don't <laughs> understand about that. I did not know Mexico was sending anybody. Yeah, why would they send? Yeah, why would we accept them? Like, why? <laughs> like, that sounds like what uh, Castro did with the... With yeah, with the, the Cuban the when the he Cuban sent all... Yeah, that, but I don't think uh, Mexico sends people. Did you have a bad exit on Saturday Night Live? Was it acrimonious? Uh, well, they fired me. <laughs> but I, there was no acrimony for me. Why did they fire you? Uh, well, they fired me because uh, there was a man, Don Olmeyer, who said I wasn't, thought I wasn't funny. Now, uh, if you look up Don Olmeyer's Wikipedia page, he's a man who did many great things. He invented Sports. the skins game. 
he uh, yeah he did football. Uh, he, he was responsible Monday for a night lot football. Of yeah, but you look him up on Wikipedia and it says Don Olmeyer, the man who fired Norm Macdonald. <laughs> <laughs> but I had no acrimony at all because listen, Larry, you told me this right after it happened. I went on your show. You said, hey, they own the cameras. They 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 do. Yeah. Eddie Murphy was going to do a skit on Bill Cosby on the 40th, and they didn't do it, right? That's right. That's correct, yeah. Was that a good decision? By Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, Man, I think it was a good decision. He was, uh, Eddie is like, uh, like no other comic I've ever met. In he, what way? He doesn't find it necessary to be funny <laughs> when he's, but all of a sudden he can be explosively funny when you're talking to him. But he's sort of a Zen guy, you know, a very calm, and maybe out of that when it when that when he springs out of that into you know this this incendiary uh, incredible force of comedy, it makes it even funnier. Chris Rock said, "We lost Robin, we lost Joan, and now we kind of lost Cosby." Cosby. What do you make of that? Sad. Yeah, real sad. I mean, listen, I grew up. He was my hero, you know. I loved him. I wanted to be just like Great him. Great stand. I didn't like his comedy, but I wanted to be just <laughs> like him. No. What do you mean? <laughs> you're sick. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Okay. You know what? You're, so, you're so good at it. Yeah. You got a part on the Joan Rivers show and turned it down? Well, I was in Canada, and uh, they said, fly down to L.A. and audition for Joan, you know? So I went down, and uh, Joan and Edgar were there, and uh, I did my little five minutes, and... Uh, I'm a great stand-up, you know, so I knew I was going to get it. So I got it, but then I just wanted to go to L.A. There was no way I was going to do anybody but Johnny Carson. So you, you went down, you auditioned. Yeah, they, they said, got a free yes. hotel. <laughs> they give me a hotel at the Hyatt. Free, uh, I think I got $40 a day to eat. I put but 30 of that in my pocket and, and went to And you didn't Pink's. do the show. You thought Johnny would be mad or what? I wanted to go on Johnny Carson. You know what I mean? No hey, other. If you went person, on Joan, you didn't go on Johnny. Joan won't anoint you as a comedian. Jimmy Fallon won't anoint you. Seth Meyers won't anoint you. You know what I mean? Only Johnny could ever make a difference in a comedian's life. So yeah, he was my dream. Although Letterman was my favorite, Johnny Carson I feel felt was more important. Uh, I, you appeared on Letterman many times. I did quite a few times. What was so special? What made David different? I think David was the smartest guy, the, the smartest comedian maybe ever. And there's an interesting thing. Some comedians, Larry, I feel uh, a comedian, his, what he should be doing is being funny. That should be his goal, to be funny. I feel some comedians, their goal is to be smart. And uh, the funny is like a collateral thing. They want to be seen as smart. Uh, your friend Bill Maher, for instance, you know, he wants to be seen as an intellectual. Dennis you know? Miller. Dennis Miller. But uh, Letterman, but Letterman understands. He's smarter than both of them. He understands play the dumb guy, you know? Play the, play yeah. the, play the everyman. Nobody likes a guy smarter than them. <laughs> That's the worst, the worst uh, guy you can be. A guy smarter than the audience. They're going to hate you, you know? Yeah, it's a very good observation. <laughs> Did you enjoy doing Letterman, doing the show? It was the greatest show to do, yeah. This is Letterman. Um, Letterman's in on the joke. The studio audience is in on the joke. The home audience is in on the joke. And the guest is the joke. So as soon as I realized that, I, I started playing with Letterman and not doing material and going off script, you know, and uh, Very true. try to keep up, but boy, it's hard. We'll talk more about David Letterman and his final run and other things with the great Norm MacDonald when we come back. We're back with Norm MacDonald. You did a poetic goodbye to David Letterman, did you not? Well, I did, this is what I did. I wanted to do stand-up uh, because I did stand-up on his show uh, 25 years ago. And so um, I did stand-up. And uh, I did the best stand-up I could possibly do. And then I did a joke that I remember uh, David Letterman doing when I was young. That still re remains my favorite joke. 
And then I got a little teary. I choked up. With, I didn't realize I was going to choke up. And then I certainly didn't realize I was going to tell him I love him. I said, I love you. <laughs> and just tears were pouring. What was your favorite face. joke? My favorite joke of Letterman? He said, uh, he said now, uh, this was when he was a, a stand-up comic long before he ever did anything. I saw him on a, a Canadian talk show. <clears throat> and he said, uh, I was following a, uh, no, he said, uh, I, was, uh, I saw a garbage truck the other day, and, and, and on the back of the garbage truck was a, a, a small sign that said, please do not follow too closely. An, another example of a meddling bureaucracy ruining one of life's simple pleasures, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Remember the old days when, when Dad used to pile the kids into a station wagon and we'd all go follow a garbage truck? <laughs> <laughs> so I always told everybody, that, but the, the word choices in that joke, you know, the precision, the concision of that joke was incredible. You know, I like sh short, I like short, there's two kinds of comics I like. One is like Rodney. He can go on, uh, I've never seen anybody like brum, brum, brum. Yeah, you got five minutes to do it, so he'll put in 30 jokes, you know, and it's explosive. The other guy's Don Rickles. Who, who is the best panel guy ever, you know? Oh, yeah. And maybe the funniest guy ever, you know? Uh, and, and I've seen him live so many times, and you know, he has the things he goes to, but every show is different. And uh, I learned that from him, that when you do, when I do a stand-up show, I always talk to the audience now, because they, you know, they can see my specials, you know, they can see uh, my material on YouTube, they can see jokes anywhere, you know? They can see your material. But if they see you live, they want interaction. What do you think of Woody Allen? Oh, uh, Woody Allen, what do you mean? He's a genius. Oh, he's a fantastic filmmaker. You know, women are very uh, torn, like actresses, because they don't like him for what I, I don't think he did anything wrong, but they don't like him for marrying. Sonny. But at the same time, he gives women the best roles in cinema. Absolutely. But I don't think that was his daughter, quite frankly. I think, I think you just married a girl, yeah. And mm -hmm. they have the greatest marriage. Every time there's somebody, ah, you can't do it, and then they have the best marriages. The, 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 the kid that married the, his the teacher. teacher. <laughs> they they, they, got they just had their 50th wedding <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> you used to get stage fright, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad, 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 bad stage. But I How'd get you get over attacks. it? Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, uh, I had incredible like uh, panic attacks. Now panic attacks are different than anxiety attacks. Anxiety attacks just get very nervous. Panic attacks, impending doom, you actually think you're gonna die. So uh, I went uh, one time, I had a panic attack immediately before uh, update where I was doing live TV. So you can see it you know, if you look it up. And uh, I'm just talking real fast, <laughs> as fast as I can because I want to get off, you know, and just rushing through the jokes and you know, nobody laughs because I don't even let them. And then afterwards, you know, Lauren was like, what was that? I was like, ah, I was trying something different. And uh, <laughs> went to a psychiatrist. And uh, ever since then, I've been gulping fistfuls of Xanax before a show. That helps. Oh, my God. It's helping right now. You took a Xanax today? Huh? You took a Xanax? <laughs> right, this is what I took today. And all You're throwing me, Norm. Xarelto. I took Xarelto. Xarelto? Yes, sir. What does that do? You don't know what Xarelto is? A blood thinner. But I had a, a pulmonary embolism, so I, now I have to take... Uh... And the funny thing is, I knew, I shouldn't be crossing my legs, that's how you can get a... I knew about pulmonary embolisms, you know, and I warned everybody, because Serena Williams had one, and she's in great shape. Yeah. Right? But it was from being on a plane and crossing her legs. Yeah, you gotta uncross them, walk yes. the plane. Walk the plane, which they don't like anymore. You know? They don't like that, especially when it's a, a young Arab-looking man like me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? They think I'm going to come in a Persian carpet? You know what I mean? Like, just because I wear my big turban and uh, I have my uh, <laughs> my dagger? You defy... You I'm a de Sikh. You defy them at the, at the gate. Yeah, I say, listen, man, I'm a Sikh, and this giant <laughs> dagger is part of my religious ceremony. Are you a comfortable passenger on airplanes? I, yeah, I am. I used to be very afraid. And what changed? I became saturated by the fear, and it stopped. And then my you mind took saturated over. saturated by the fear, so it stopped? Yeah, yeah, you can only be scared so long. But my mind took over, and you know what I realized? You're safer on an airplane. You know, there's 10,000 flights a day, you know? 
you're safer on an airplane because uh, nobody's going to mug you. Nobody's going to rape you. Now, I'm probably not going to be raped. I'm not a good-looking fella anymore. And you're not going to crash into another plane. You know, there's, yeah. they're too far away. Exactly. And... But a car, you'll cra You know what I mean? You're driving all the time, and you see a car crash. You know, and you just go, oh. <laughs> you know, you don't think anything of it. Meanwhile, in a plane, if you saw, looked over and saw a plane <laughs> crash into a mountain, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go, oh, that guy helped me up a little. <laughs> But people are not afraid of cars. Never. I'm, I don't. I don't. Like, I'm paralyzed. I don't cars. like turbulence. I've oh, turbulence. Miles, is, yeah. But I don't accept the fact that it ain't going to turn over. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to accept that there's such a thing as a plane. Correct, because you're sitting in a chair yeah. in a piece of steel in the sky. You know, what I was thinking Think the other day, Larry. You know, what I was thinking. What? How would you know? <laughs> I was thinking this. The Wright brothers. Amazing, right? Yeah. They went on Kitty Hawk. I think they went up for 45 seconds or right. something in their first thing. They're geniuses, right? Everybody that came before them, they were on a blooper reel. It's like, da na 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 <laughs> you know? But meanwhile, at the time, they were probably, whoa, Jack went 10 seconds, you know? <laughs> but now it's just a gag reel. <laughs> And these are the people that uh, uh, whose shoulders uh, Orville and was that his name? Wilbur. I'm thinking of the Orville popcorn and Wilbur, guys. Yeah. yeah, Orville and Wilbur stood on these men's shoulders it's that we mock. It's the book in the country. Book Say again. The, the book on the Wright brothers. Is, is it a good? David Murdoch. I just got it. David Murdoch's a great writer. Yeah. I'd love to read that. I, I know that one died, or young, right? Have you read it yet? I don't want to. I haven't. Them. I just got it. Oh, oh, oh. never mind. <laughs> 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 Norm takes your social media questions after this. <laughs> We're back with Norm McDonald, uh, some social media questions. But first, you played in the Super High Roller Celebrity Shootout Poker Tournament. Yes, sir. How did you do? I can't, I'm not at uh, liberty to tell. Oh, they haven't shown it yet? No, they haven't shown it yet. You play poker a lot? I love it, yeah. I'm a very good poker player. How much of poker is skill? How much is the cards? All of it's skill. Because uh, over time, all the cards uh, are the same. Everybody gets the same cards, not on a single hand, but over, let's say, a thousand hands, we'll, me and you will get the same cards. It, it all depends on how, how, you, play how you play the cards. You know, you, uh, uh, you got to know when to hold them. And know when to fold them. Yeah, you got to know when to walk away. No when to run. Yeah, which is very humiliating when you start running away. <laughs> Some comedians, is it true, bomb on purpose? Uh, Louis C.K. said that sometimes he'll bomb on purpose so that it proves himself he can win back an audience. Have you ever done that? No. No. I've bombed. <laughs> but, not, not. but I don't try to win him back. Here's the th funny thing about when I bomb. <laughs> I feel comedy is surprise, right? Of course. That's the funniest thing, something they don't expect. Now, if all these people came to see me to laugh, and then uh, they don't, that's a big surprise. <laughs> so that makes me sort of, uh, I get a, kind of an out-of-body experience. Then I make a big mistake, I smirk. And then they hate my guts. Good thinking, Norm. We have some <laughs> social media questions. But I know you. now... Talk to the audience if you're ever bombing. Just engage the audience. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Zuka Not ah, yes. on our blog. Has there ever been a time when you were being earnest about something important to you and everybody was certain you were joking? Yes, that happens very often, you know. You're being serious. In yeah, the, you go, eating. my God, uh, you know, uh, my father's uh, on his last legs, suffocating black bile coming out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Deanne Coulter on Twitter, is your style of joke delivery genetic or developed? Aha. Uh -huh. No, it's, it's genetic. Uh, your because father was funny? No, it's just the, she, she said the style of delivery, and I always had a weird voice. Like, I talk. I know, I don't think I do. People don't know until they hear a tape recorder. But I know from people do impressions of me. They go, hey, I can do you. I go, oh, how does that go? And then they go, hey, how are you doing? Hey, what's going on? Hey. It's like... You don't so, say that. So they say imitation's the sincerest form of flattery, but no, sometimes not. Ben Calpink on our blog. You ben. seem to have streaks of great introspection and carry a philosophic attitude on Twitter. Is tweeting ever a means to create material and grow as a human being? Grow as a human being, yes. 
Last night, Larry, I had a long exchange with uh, Professor Richard Dawkins. Now, that would never happen to an old chunk of coal like me in a regular life. I couldn't get a, a, a biologist in, uh, down the street to talk to me. But here I am asking questions, and I stumped him on one question. Can you believe that? The, what did, what the great was, Richard what, Dawkins? What did you stump him on? Oh, he said we were all hardwired to, to uh, live on, to procreate. We're hardwired for most everything we do. And I said, if we're hardwired, but we're aware we're hardwired, doesn't that mean we're not hardwired? Stump. What did he say? He said, that's an interesting philosophical question. I'll have to think about it and get back to you. <laughs> I tweet, and, and then he plugged his book. <laughs> every Sunday night I do It's My Two Cents, and I do the old column, but I do things. You do it on, on every, where? On Twitter. Oh, I, 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 wait a minute. Is that King's Things? Though? Yeah. Okay. But I, I do it's oh, I didn't know you did it all in a, on, in a gut. Ah, yeah. yeah Jerry yeah. Seinfeld said I invented Twitter. That's true. It's My Two Cents. That's, yeah, I would say you and Jack Handy. Jack Handy, yeah. yeah. Jack uh, Mangos on Facebook. Dirty Work 2, what are your thoughts? Um, uh, yeah, I started in Dirty Work. Dirty Work 2, uh, we're talking about doing a sequel. Because nowadays, you know, I, because, I, I thought of it because uh, uh, my friend David Spade did Joe Dirt 2. But instead yeah, of going to theater, that. you haven't seen it, it has not, it's not out yet. It's going to Crackle. What's Crackle? Crackle is the, th the place where Jerry Seinfeld does comedies in cars. Oh, all oh, that. It's just one of the million things on your smart TV. But uh, so you can do a, a movie, a very low budget movie, uh, and just put it direct. Like Adam Sandler does all his movies direct to Netflix now. You know? What is, it wasn't Seinfeld the best series. Oh, by far. Incredibly yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't make. I mean, to me, the greatest series ever was You'll Never Get Rich. But, uh, uh, Who's in that? Uh, Phil Silvers. I did change his name to Bilko. Yeah. But to me, that made me laugh the most. Oh, Bilko. But, uh, but uh, the best written show uh, was, uh, and the best acted show was Seinfeld, yeah. Oh, genius. Uh, and, Jeremy. And, and Costan, you know, George Costanza, you know, oh. Jason Alexander, you know. And, and, and Steinbrenner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jerry Veal on Larry King. Steinbrenner Alpha. was Larry David. Yeah. yeah. Do you have some philosophy or faith that guides you in your career path and life in general? Do you no. have a philosophy? No, man. I don't think two seconds ahead. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what that means, but, but I just I kind. I try to be kind to people now, Larry. This is what I'm learning. I'm learning in my uh, dotage. In your dotage? Yeah. My old that, age. You know. oh, dotage is old age? Yeah. I'm We're still ambulatory, but... <laughs> but I believe kindness. I, now, I used to go buy homeless people. Like, there's a homeless guy who lived beside me, right? I would go buy him. He'd go, hey, man, you got a dollar? I'd go, I got no dollar, and be a dollar falling out of my pocket. <laughs> I'd go, that's not for you. That's for licorice. <laughs> and I'd go buy some licorice, come back, and the guy would go, you got a dollar or licorice? i go, no, get a job. Now, there's not a lot of jobs for guys that defecate in their pants. Thank you, Norm, for being with us in another enlightening <laughs> philosophical uh, edition of Larry King. Now you can catch my guest, Norm MacDonald, on Last Comic Standing on NBC, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 Central. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>